and con keeping Indian conditions in mind. So I would say, uh, and just to add to what Ashok said about India, uh, you know, today about 70 percent of India's infrastructure to be able to sustain our 1.2 billion people is still to be built. So why should we be building that on basis of old designed stuff? So, and we've got this huge opportunity, and I think G is uh, now fed up with, with my frugal engineering uh, story, <laughs> but he's been seeing it at work uh, through the day. Uh, we, we have an ability here, as Suresh also said, that to redesign stuff in a very frugal way, optimized around energy. We naturally do it because our government, I'm sorry, I hope there are not too many government people out here, but our government has, you know, we, we've not done a great job in terms of providing good stable power over the years. So we are naturally frugal, we are naturally with backup to backups and so on and so forth. We've created new industries for inverters. If you go outside and tell what is an inverter, nobody outside India knows what an inverter is. <laughs> it's a fact of life. <laughs> but those things, what's happened, that uh, neg so-called negative is really the positive for the energy starved future of the future. So I, I think that's the opportunity that we need to see and this is where industry, academia, Everybody needs to work together in a cross-disciplinary way. Like you see this kind of panel here. So we've got uh, Harish. So solar, who would have thought telecom equals to solar? It's not, not, what's it got to do with each other? So you've got to think across with, from academia, from industry, from, uh, and across the world and have uh, solutions like Green Touch, which will actually help in coming out with solutions. That's what I would have to say. Very good. Thank you, Ron. So let's now, I think up to now we've been talking about networks. So let's now look a little bit beyond as to what networks can do. So uh, our next speaker is uh, Shrikantan Murthy. Uh, Dan is a senior vice president and group head uh, for education and research at Infosys, the, the, the big famous Infosys, right? He has more than 23 years experience in technology, project and people management and customer interaction. Um, let's see. He led Infosys's green initiatives on consumer education, and I think that's going to be the focus of his uh, uh, talk today. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, somebody else's laptop. Somebody will have to log into it. But, uh, you can use that. You can. All right. I can. Um, well, no, I told you it's uh, kind of a different. Uh, yeah. No, let's see. <laughs> Actually, so since we are talking of India, I thought we will start with uh, something that is in India, which is the largest building that is built in independent India. It is the Global Education Center of Infosys at Mysore, where we can train about 14,400 people on a single day. So that's why I thought we'll start with something that is about India. Uh, so that's a real building and a real picture. So can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, now, we've used the topic of ICT for corporate sustainability, and we've used corporate and sustainability together because I think sustainability no longer is something that is nice to do, but a must do. I also think that creating a sustainable world has gone beyond the realm of governments to the realm of corporates because the reach of corporates has crossed boundaries. The ability of corporates to do things is in some cases more than what the government can do. So in partnership, I think a sustainable world can be built. And that's why I think corporate sustainability is an important topic. So if you go to the next one, I just want to talk to you about one slide on what uh, the approach for corporate sustainability has been at Infosys. And it really is focused on three themes. Social contracts, which is working with the stakeholders beyond your clients and employees. And then Looking at resource consumption, it's actually about responsible consumption to make sure that you don't use the way you always continue to, but focus on reducing or in some cases eliminate consumption. And looking at green innovation, which is about bringing new things for our clients to be sustainable as well. So that really is the focus and the base of all of that is the value system of the organization. So that's the approach we've taken to corporate sustainability. Now, if you look at a framework for how ICT can be leveraged for corporate uh, sustainability or sustainability in general. Now, IT has been primarily about automation. Look at the manual process and automate. And you can take the simple example of how you, know, you booked tickets or today how you do income tax. I mean, email probably was the first step towards automation. But the digitization is about 
going beyond that, going beyond simple automation to dematerialization in some sense, getting things to digitize. So if you take the uh, income tax example again, just by using email for communication with the taxpayers, they were able to save more than 270,000 lakh pages of printed paper. By making it, digitizing the filing, the savings went up to a 2,700 lakh papers, which actually amounts to about 35,000 trees. That's the impact of IT and digitization on sustainability. And there are many more, and I'll talk a little bit about a few other things. The measurement part comes from sensors. Now, you know, I showed you that campus and that building. One of our challenges is to make it water neutral, meaning that we do not want to depend on the government to supply water to that building. And in order to do that, we have put m meters at every source of water consumption. And now it is sensors and then a SIM card to make sure that that communication happens. And that's where the transmission comes in terms of sustainability. So you, you digitize, you start measuring, then you transmit that data because if you want to look at it from a central perspective and start controlling what you use and how you use, you need to have networks in place. And then of course the reporting part, the reporting is no longer again something that you want to show because there is a compliance or a regulatory requirement. Reporting is also for somebody to take action. Reporting at a, an individual level, at a business unit level, at a corporate level, that can trigger action. And there are several actions that come out when you're able to consolidate this. And these are some things that you can get out of leverage of ICT for uh, sustainability. So if you can please go to the next slide. Uh, a few examples. Now we've used to created a carbon calculator where every individual in the organization can go up and see their carbon usage. That could come from the size of their household, it come from their travel, are they using public transport, are they doing a lot of air travel, all of that gives them, because awareness is the starting point. The energy management application is about capturing the energy usage across the organization, across campuses, across buildings and taking action. And of course the, the plug load manager is an interesting one where there is intelligence built into the plug. You'll be surprised to know that the power consumption is in the plug that is connected to devices and most of the consumption happens in those plugs when the devices are not being used. So methods to build intelligence into that to ensure that the power consumed is regulated and controlled, devices are turned off if they are not used, creating policies for those, all of those comes from the leverage of intelligence built into the system and that's where ICT comes. Now, if we, uh, the last part of this is also about building awareness. So the next slide, please. And building awareness is about creating citizenship behavior in individuals by understanding what they need to be responsible for, what we need to be responsible for as individuals first, and then creating leadership attributes that helps them go create solutions that can help promulgate sustainability and then of course going beyond that to become leaders that help creation of sustainable solutions globally. And that is where I think awareness and our ability to reach out, reach out not only to a 150,000 employee organization but also to the student population by virtue of educating them and bringing awareness. It all not only leads to a behavioral change but can also have the potential of creating solutions that are specific to our needs in India. And so that's really the big picture that I just wanted to share with you on our approach to sustainability. Thank you. So now we go for Harish. Harish is a social entrepreneur. So Harish, what does that mean? Does that mean that you are goody goody not just for the sake of being goody goody but you can actually make money? by being goody-goody, is that social entrepreneur, right? I, I think that's something like that, right? He co-founded Selco India a, uh, to eradicate poverty by promoting sustainable technologies in India. Um, you know, uh, I know, I knew Harish was a rebel because the first sort of sync-up call that we had, 
he suggested eight o'clock in the morning on Saturday, which is just an, an unholy time to ask somebody to talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. And then the first thing he tells me is, Suresh, you're just being romantic, and you're, be, you're completely off, you're completely wrong. And I thought, yeah, this is a Bell Labs kind of thinker. So uh, looking forward to hear about your views, about setting us on the right path. Thanks, sir. I'm not sure about that, because I, I, I had first no clue why I was invited for this panel, uh, <laughs> because I have no idea what telecom is. I can't use my phone properly. The younger generation in my office makes fun, fun of me. And uh, I still use the ink pen. I travel with my ink pots. So, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I sincerely believe that we've, we've made telecom more romantic than it is, because and, and we make it romantic in a sense that, oh, the poor people are getting helped and, and et cetera, et cetera, so we should do it. But reality, I would say, and, and, and purely from our 17 years of rural experience, it's not true. It's absolutely not true. I, because it's very much an English-speaking crowd in the world. It's trying to look at what the, what the needs of the non-English-speaking crowds are. We all know when we saw the movie Lost in Translation, how much gets lost in translation. The needs of the poor are very different. And when, he, when people said, oh, uh, the farmers, it's very sexy that the farmer gets actually knows what the cost of his product at the market is, and he actually can sell it at that point of time. These are one out of 100. And as in IIT, you know that the, the best, best data point becomes the average data point. <laughs> right rather than the, than the norm, and we all know how it is. The question is, yes, I mean, what we, telecom is, or the mobile phone for us, is just part of the chain, until and unless we do not build the ecosystem around it. Because if you look, go to cobblers of Athene, for example, or you go to the pottery makers of Gulbarga, actually people, when they actually come to know what the cost of a pot, pot is in, in a market, or the shoe is in the market, they actually get frustrated. They say, well, if this is the cost of actual is, they cannot, it's very difficult to get them out of the chain of the middleman, because the middleman actually provides many more services. He provides not only takes his linkage to the markets, the finance, the whole ecosystem around it. We can always complain, yes, he's charging 10% a day, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, he is charging, he's cheating, he's making most of the money. Go to a salt worker in Kutch. He or she makes three pesa for salt. Three pesa. By for, for a kilogram. Per kilogram, three pesa. That's sold at 14 rupees at the, wow. at the, at the end retail. We can talk about it, but the middleman actually supplies the diesel for the pump. He actually supplies the rocket linkage. He then provides just plain, plain and simple that he or she knows that it's been sold at 14 rupees. Actually, makes actually leads to frustration. If you go and do an average study of Kulberga farmers or to to the Athani, they will say that's exactly because it's sold. It's no use of my child to, in fact, go through this whole pottery making. I want to stop the pottery making. Let him become a, 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 a construction worker in Mumbai. Our question is that's, I mean, it's, I think we're still very romantic. I mean, and you see all of us. You, can we have a similar discussion in Canada? The same panel discussion in Canada. Same panel discussion in Oriya. We'll not. Until we are not able to actually tune in straight off to the people of this country, we can, and, and the positive is that this is a country which is a paradox, which is a paradox of an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped country where we can actually prove the business models of linking telecom, alleviating poverty, using sustainable energy. Let us be that soft superpower that countries in Africa, Latin America, and Southeast Asia can actually follow because US and Europe have a different problem. You already have the baggage of infrastructure. That is, the, you have to, they have to go to stops back. We already do not. We do not, we have 500 million people who, earn less than a dollar a day, you can go to Mysore. If you look at Mysore, for example, the families out of Mysore, 1,600 rupees, $32 a month. Each of them bought $160 worth solar systems, proving the myth that solar is expensive. The catch was they, had they were spending on kerosene and candles 140 rupees and plus 40 rupees on mobile because they were working on somebody's farm. Landlord would call them any time, which is a direct linkage to you. 40 rupees, because 5 rupees per charge people spend going to the nearest silk spot. A solar system with two lights and a mobile 